Welcome back. Our special edition continues now sitting down with two state representatives from Madison. That's Shelia Stubbs and Francesca Hong. I really appreciate you both for coming in this morning and talking to me about this issue. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you. for having us. I want to talk with about potentially probably the hardest question to answer right off the bat. What was going through each of your minds when you saw the video for the first time? I'll start with you. I could not believe what I was seeing. I thought people had learned enough when the nation, the country saw Mr. Floyd murdered, seeing what happened to Breonna Taylor. I cried every moment. I felt like I wanted to go through the TV screen to help. I could not believe what I was seeing. I saw anger, I saw frustration, I saw abuse, I saw excessive force. I watched it with my mother and my daughter and I cried out to hear this young man cry for his mother because these officers exposed him to pepper spray and a billy stick. And, you know, I've been exposed to pepper spray before and I know what that felt like. But all of this from a simple traffic stop, it should never have warranted him to be dead. And that itself, it was extremely disturbing. And it gives me this question, what is the culture of that department? How did this Scorpion team feel that they could get away? They didn't even care, they had body cameras on. So they knew they were being recorded. There were cameras around the community. They knew they were being recorded, but they had no respect for humanity. And it was just unacceptable. I was angry. I was scared. I cried. I mean, every time I have a conversation, I'm a mother. And the one thing that I know officers are not taught is empathy. There was no empathy, no regard to help this young man. Representative Hong? I was thinking it doesn't have to be this way. And we are choosing to ignore the humanity of specifically black bodies in this country and upholding an inherently racist system that not only puts officers in harm's way, but has maintained disparities so that the communities most historically disinvested from are most likely to face this type of violence and death and it doesn't have to be this way. As a lawmaker, you've been very vocal in terms of where you see the system at. As you just mentioned, it's the system at fault. Where do you see taking that for your community, for Madison, for the state of Wisconsin in terms of legislation? As Representative Stubbs mentioned, it is important that we uh, look at the culture, um, but this systemic failure means and demands comprehensive solutions. And we have to remember that the system of policing has been designed to be reactive, not preventative. So where as lawmakers, as community members, do we need to shift both the culture and the laws to reinvest and fund the communities in a way that makes people feel safe, thrive, and feel as though they can have communities uh, without the presence of police. And that exists today in predominantly white suburbs across the country. Representative Stubbs, you sat on a bipartisan task force after the murder of George Floyd. Uh, George Floyd. Some of the reforms and the policies that were discussed in that task force, some came into law, some were kind of left by the wayside. But my question to you would be this, because Memphis Police Department went through and adopted reforms after George Floyd as well. So where do we get to the point where we say policies aren't enough? Right, I, I think that you go back to the culture of that department. It starts with the chief. The chief have to set the standards. I do believe that officers are given the proper training but they decide at their own will how much of their training they're really going to enforce the way that they were taught. It was a disregard on each of those commands that they were taught. But in the state of Wisconsin, as I sat in the room with some of the largest protesters across the state of Wisconsin, with law enforcement, with pastors, with organizers, it was very clear excessive use of force was that particular policy that we needed to make sure uh, was passed in the state of Wisconsin. I'm not sure if you're aware that every department had a different definition for excessive use of force. How disturbing. How could that happen? And we don't know what department went too far or not enough. I know what I felt. I know how I feel as an African American that I feel like our communities are policed longer, harder, in a different way. So for me, as a lawmaker, as a mom, as an African American, as someone who has been profiled in Madison, Wisconsin, it was to define use of force. I worked uh, at a subcommittee level to chair that and to have one definition 
across the entire state of Wisconsin, I think is one way to approach policy as a lawmaker. One of the reasons that we convene as a, as a station, these, this combined set of panels, is to answer the question for the community of what can we tell them to at least to some degree assure them that an incident like Tyree Nichols or George Floyd or Breonna Taylor won't happen here. Where do you think the gaps are or where do you think what needs to be done in the community to answer that question for them? I think constantly remembering that the policies, the cultural changes, the narratives have to be an and conversation and not just one thing. Um, disinvesting from uh, police departments, uh, reinvesting in communities. It doesn't have to be a binary. We have a CARES program that we've implemented here in Madison, and now there are more resource being, resources being put towards addressing mental health calls. We need to make sure that our budgets and the way that we value how communities are keeping each other safe right now, that we are funding nonprofit organizations, that we are funding neighborhood programs, that we are looking at funding public education, housing, uh, uh, child care, and food insecurity, the same way that we are looking at how we have funded law enforcement. And if we don't look at investment in communities as a way to prevent crime, then we are not going to prevent crime. And if we don't look at the fact that safety in itself is something that everyone has a right to and should feel, then we look at the, we have to look at the communities that do have, that have safety, that don't have a lot of law enforcement presence, and realize what are the tools that can we we provide to the communities that have historically been disinvested from and start making investments in them and listen to the folks who have had to do more with less and validate that there are different ways to address violence. But the one thing we all have to be on the same page about is that investment is in communities is as valid and even more important than investment in law enforcement. In our last 30 or so seconds, I'm not going to give you much time to answer this question, Representative Stubbs, but is, is part of the problem here ending things like qualified immunity? No, I don't think that has to be the end all be all. It has to start with a conversation. I think when people decide they want to attack law enforcement, at the end of the day, the law is just ranking, highest ranking law enforcement officer for the state of Wisconsin is Attorney General Call. The buck stop with the Attorney General's office. He's the office that gets a chance to look at the investigations. I also would like to say, it's not just Breonna Taylor case or George Floyd. Uh, we had Justin Blake case right here in Wisconsin, and I think that's the case that led us to doing this work. But again, we've had the conversation with qualified immunity. It's really from a federal perspective. We looked at that at the task force, but it's really a federal perspective that needs to approach that. Thank you both so much uh, for joining. Um, I can see in your face you would like to weigh in here, but I do have to close things up for now. We're going to have more online. You can recap these conversations on 3000.com. Thank you for watching For the Record. Enjoy your week. This has been For the Record.